everybody, my name is Emma, welcome to Emma Rosen Books and in today's video I'm going to talk about how to record your own audiobook. Now there are other options, you can go to a studio, and I will mention that a little bit later on in this video, or you can do a narrator royalty share with ACX, which I know a lot of authors use and that works really well for them. However, if what you want to do is narrate your own, then this is a guide basically to doing it with the bare minimum <laughs> technology, um, just in a very easy, very DIY fashion. This is not a, this is how you have to do it. This is a way of, this is me explaining lots of workarounds, lots of tips and tricks to make a perfectly good audiobook. Um, I'm also going to link you to a playlist I've created of videos that I watched um, and just useful audiobook things to help you just with those ways of doing it at home because it's really hard to get that good sound quality at home and I mean the microphone on this camera is pretty dreadful and you might be able to hear the birds singing outside because I've got the window open so sound quality isn't always the best um, so it's tricky to do at home, as I say, this is just how to do it basically with what you have, with, with as little extra purchases as possible. That's the plan, anyway. So, um, I actually made this video before. I made it about 18 months ago, and I probably took it down three or four months ago, I would say, because I re-watched it and thought, oh, <laughs> that's, that's rubbish. It wasn't very well filmed, I didn't explain things very well, and I wouldn't give the same tips now that I did then. So I took it down because I only want to give you the best information that I can. The other side of things is that that book I was recording then never, was never published, It well, it was just not in audiobook form. The aud that audiobook was never published. And so now with the information I have, I currently have a published audiobook, which is the audio version of Lily the Limpet Gets Lost, which is my children's book. Um, so I've now been through the whole process, I've recorded it, edited it, and uploaded it. So the video I made before was always going to be in a few parts, and I only got as far as recording the recording the audio bit, um, but I, I never got further in the process, so I didn't record those sections. This one will be a two or three parter, so today I'm going to talk to you about how I set things up, what I use, kind of my technical side of things, how I actually record the audio. And then I don't know whether I'll do it in two parts or three parts, but future videos I will talk about how I edit the audio and how I export and upload. Um, so as I said, this isn't a like exact how to, this is just a bit of a, this works, if it works for you, great, um, and a few tips and tricks, and here's how you can find information, that kind of thing. So before I start, however, I want to talk about my previous audiobook journey, because it helps to explain some tips and tricks, and I've got something in my eye. Um, wow. So, like I said, I recorded that video, it was about 18 months ago. So my book, Milk, came out, in fact, practically two years to the day, so on the 22nd of October 2018, Milk came out. And I really wanted to produce an audiobook because um, I like audio. I listen to a lot of podcasts, I also listen to audiobooks, so it made sense for me to produce a format I like. It's a market I really believe in because I think, I think things are really moving that way. People do consume a lot more audio because you're on the go, so you can read a book on the go, that really works for people. Um, also with integration into things like um, Google Home or Alexa, I can't say her name because she'll hear me, she hates me. Um, so it was really something I wanted to get involved in. So I have a bit of a, a musical background, um, I play, I sing in a band, I've got a good ear for music and for sound in general. Um, and a little bit of technical knowledge, but anyone who knows me well would say that that is... Uh, Ropey. but I learn easily. <laughs> so anyway, a friend of mine lent me this microphone, which I haven't given back yet, but I will, um, which is the ProSound USB 2.0 HQ podcast vocal microphone. And this was what I was using in the previous video, if any of you remember it, um, to record. So 
I really didn't get on with this. The first issue was the first time I sat down to record that audiobook. First of all, I didn't realise you could bend the microphone and actually move it. So, so that was good. So I wasn't actually pointing the microphone properly at the sound. And that's an embarrassment. If you look at that video, you can see that it's like not pointing in the right direction. Marvellous. Um, also, this has got quite a clunky bass and nothing in my house is flat, I would say. So anything I put it on, you could hear it just a really subtle like as the microphone moved as maybe I shifted weight and then that would move something. So that was annoying. Um, and also I found that this slightly overdrives my laptop and so it gives a, a background hiss that was too much for me to be able to remove. I, I've tried even reusing this microphone and I don't get on with it. That first time I recorded, um, what I did was I sat down and I recorded the entire book. I spent a couple of weeks doing it, maybe even been a month. <laughs> and then I listened to that audio and it was awful because I hadn't set things up right. I've, oh, I was sat in my um, study, um, which is now a child's bedroom, and just had it on the, on the desk. The room tone was dreadful. It just, it sounded awful. So I then decided to give it another go because I didn't want to be beaten and um, one thing was that I had lots of plosives so if you don't know what a plosive is it's the sort of p um, sound or t or d when you expel air from your mouth and you hear like a, a pop on the microphone. So I bought da -da -da, a pop shield. I really recommend you get one of these. It was really inexpensive. I think I got it from Amazon and it was like 15 quid. So I thought right I now have a pop shield. Everything will be fine. So I'd since lost my study, so I recorded in here, this is my bedroom. I put my laptop on the bed, I got my stool for my dressing table, put my microphone on that, <clears throat> and um, sat on the floor, so I was at a nice level with the microphone, and re-recorded the whole thing. Yet another mistake. Um, and then when I started editing it, the, the audio was still a mess. I was having to re-record big sections because there were still plosive sounds. There were mouth noises. You could hear me breathing. You could hear stuff outside. And then what I found was when I patched the audio, it was, you could hear that I'd done it. Um, and again, I was still recording in a big room. It's not that big, but you know. Um, so the sound wasn't, just was rubbish, <laughs> basically. So all in all, from that experience, I didn't get on with this microphone. That's not to say don't try it if you have this or similar and it works for you great, it just didn't for me. It should be suitable for like podcasting and recording audio. I just didn't get on with it. Uh, get a pop shield. And then, so once I shelved that project, I was still researching because I still wanted to revisit this. And so then, Da, da, da. I, uh, I, <laughs> words, my brain has just gone blah, blah. Um, I wanted to buy one of these. So I was looking out for, this is a blue snowball, and these retail at about 50, 60 quid, so really not bad. Um, it's like the little brother of the Blue Yeti, which is a real industry standard microphone. Um, and do you know, the quality is excellent. It really is. If you look up reviews online, some people say you can even barely tell the difference. I don't know if that's true because I've never used a Blue Yeti, so don't know. But um, I was really keen on trying this because I felt like this would solve all of my problems. Now, I bought this secondhand um, because I felt that then if I didn't get on with it, I could just resell it for the same price. And I think I paid £30 for it. So, you know, just look out for them in your local area. It has a little tripod which has got rubber feet so much better than the clunky base um, and I am so impressed with this microphone I've really got on well with it so really I paid £30 for this £15 for that that's really inexpensive um, and I'm going to show you how I use these with my home setup to record audio before I get on with it though so Part of me talking about that story of recording the audiobook, I wanted to give you a bit of a tip. Sitting down and recording a 300 page book in one sitting, or not in one sitting, but in one go, is a really bad idea because audio is hard. Narration is, is a bit of a learned skill. 
sound technology, you know, there's courses in it for a reason. This stuff isn't easy. And if you just sit down and record it, it the chances are it's not going to sound great. I really recommend that you record something small. So that was part of my thinking in producing Lily the Limpet, um, Lily, Lily the Limpet Gets Lost in audio form before revisiting Milk. So uh, Lily is out now. I'm still waiting for some retailers. Um, so I've only kind of half announced it because some people haven't, uh, some people, some companies aren't, aren't selling it yet, but it will turn up. Um, and so Lily the Limpet is about six minutes to read. And so I could try my setup. I could record the whole thing in a day. Editing didn't take it long. I could really, didn't take it long, didn't take long. And so I could really focus on it, figure it out, learn, go through the whole process for a short book. And also if I got to the end and the files weren't approved by um, Find Away Voices is who I use, then I didn't want to get to that point and find out that all my work was fruitless again. So it just meant I was working on something short. So I recommend, at the very least, even if you're not going to go through to actually publishing something short, still record something shorter. So just work on one chapter or work on a short book or just read a piece of poetry or something so that you can go through that process of recording it and editing it, really listening to the sound, trying your setup, trying different things, seeing what works for you before embarking on something that's I mean, a 10 hour audiobook in theory will take you like 40 hours plus to edit. Um, so just um, it, it, the more inexperienced you are, the longer it takes. So really, it's a huge undertaking. So that's my tip. Twice I recorded the entire book. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Um, <laughs> without listening to it. So now when I so I'm going to start re-recording Milk um, because I'm a glutton for punishment. And I'm going to do it section by section. So I will do one or two chapters, edit those and move on. Now, another reason for doing that, not just because it's you could screw it all up and you won't know until you start editing it, is also that I find my voice really changes. Some days I am much more high pitched than others. Sometimes I'm a bit croaky. Um, that I find kind of atmospheric conditions affect the sound a bit. So if you're editing months down the line and you're having to just re-record a little section, I found that so hard to try and get my voice to the same pitch and with the sound, same quality. So I just, it's really hard to explain, but basically, I, you know, I couldn't recreate those conditions. Whereas if what you've done is recorded a chapter and then sat down and edited it, and if you have to re-record any sections of it, your voice should be fairly comparable, your setup should be fairly comparable, it should be a lot easier to add those sections in without you being able to tell. Um, even ideally, do the whole thing in a day if you can. So record a bit, record one chapter and edit that chapter with your setup still there so you can just kind of with your voice sounding the same, everything sounding the same, you can try and achieve as good a recording as you can. Um, so that would be my first tip. If you, if you can, I think that works really well, rather than trying to go all in and then discovering, you've wasted a lot of time. Right, so now I'm going to show you a little bit more of my setup. So here goes. Ow, sorry, I've really hurt my legs. Okay, so in terms of um, equipment, so as I've already said, I've got this microphone, the Blue Snowball, I'll link it below. And this is a USB mic, so it comes with this cable, but I mean, you could replace this if you get it without it. Um, and so this just plugs directly into the back of the microphone here, and then has a USB um, connection on the other end. Some people say that USB microphones aren't good enough for audiobook. My personal experience is it sounds fine and other people do it and it's okay. But um, you can get a microphone that plugs into like an external unit and then that plugs into your laptop. And I'll, I'll link to some stuff um, if that's what you want to look at. But obviously that's more expensive. There are affordable ways of doing it, but it's a lot more expensive than using a USB mic. This plugs directly into my laptop. This is a MacBook Air. Um, it's just what I have. Um, you know, you could use any kind of computer or laptop. I use GarageBand because that is free on Mac and I know how to use it. 
but you can use Audacity, which is a free download, and there's loads of information online how to use that. So as I explain how to do it, I will be explaining GarageBand, but it's not going to be that different. I have used Audacity, and it's not it, it, it's kind of similar in some ways. And um, yeah, if that's what you want to do, you can work it that way. But just use whatever computery technology you have, <laughs> and um, hopefully that will be okay. But yeah, so that's what that is. And then, as I said, I've got a pop shield as well. So that is literally, that, that's the technical department of my audiobook production. So next up um, is that you need to create a studio. Now, you do have the option, of course, of going to a studio. And in fact, I approached a few people while I was investigating different options for doing this. So I looked at booking a studio. It can be very expensive, but you can offer to, or ask rather, to have just the um, just the audio recorded and then you do the editing yourself and that makes it cheaper if you feel confident to do that. So I was looking at doing it that way. So you're literally just paying for the studio time, not for the editing. Um, another option is I was speaking to some sort of local radio people to see if I could use their facilities because obviously they have good audio and then I can... I don't know, give them a shout out in the audiobook and I can shout them out on my social media and all, all that stuff and kind of cross promotion or, or pay them, you know, however, however works, you can look at various different options. But anyway, I wanted ultimately to create a home studio because my setup on the edge of my bed was lousy. So what we need to think about for that is the attributes of your house, the soundscape, if you will. <laughs> Why am I going like this in your house? So this is my bedroom, which is where I did record it. Um, so because it's a bedroom, it has got curtains. There's a curtain. It's got curtains and carpet and a bed and soft furnishings. So therefore it is a dull sounding room. I'm gonna give you um, just a alternative to contrast that with. We're going to walk through my house. My house is a mess. We're gonna ignore that fact. So another example, this is the stairs, and because it is tall, can you hear the difference in sound, even just on the microphone on this camera? And then if, and then if I go into my living room, where I quite often record audio, I've complained before about how echoey it, uh, echoey it is. But in here, I mean, we have a rug, but we've got blinds, so there's no curtains absorbing the sound. We've got a leather sofa in here. Um, so can you, um, uh, hopefully you can hear really clearly on the audio the difference. Again, in here, this is our extension. Again, this has got wooden floors. There are curtains, but can you hear the difference in the sound? So these rooms, these echoey rooms downstairs with hard floors, they're quite big rooms. I just, I mean, this room, this extension links onto my kitchen. And so there's just so much space. The sound is bouncing around off of the walls. There's not that sort of soft furnishing um, so don't don't record in rooms like this. So we've established that you need to be in a room with a lot of soft furnishings. I'm literally, sorry I can't really show you very well, the bed is right in front of me. So um, there's a king size bed in here, there's curtains, there's a carpet. So this is a, um, a dampened room and I can hear the difference. Walk around your, your home and see where, where sounds sounds as, as dead as possible. Um, once you've chosen your room, however, this room, from experience, because I've already tried to record this, you can still hear that I am in a big room when you record in here. So the sound is better, but it's not got that real close, um, uh, like, quality that you expect in an audiobook. Um, if you went into a studio, then you would be in a booth, a small booth, with acoustic material around you to get that really close um, quality to it and that real kind of clear um, quality to it as well. I am looking at kind of how you could do it from home anyway. So if we've decided we're gonna record in this room, one of the big pros of this room is a wardrobe. Wardrobes are good. So this is a nice big triple wardrobe, although I'm only gonna use the double wardrobe part of it. And what you can do, and what works for some people, is get in your wardrobe. If it's big enough, if you've got some kind of large armoire, <laughs> um, and unlike me, I've got a second rail, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got two rails of clothes, so I can't, if you can like get in 
and closed the doors, you may well find that that will work because the clothes dampen. Um, you might be able to set something up that way. Um, <laughs> but that's not going to work for me. I've got too many clothes in here. There's no way I can fit in this wardrobe. Even if I took the clothes out, I can't get in it. So, um, and also I don't know how much the wood, it's not going to be the best acoustic dampener. So I don't know, but it's an option for you. So I am going to employ my skills as a den builder. <laughs> and this might seem ridiculous and really unprofessional, but it works. And you will find that a lot of people over lockdown, proper professionals have been building blanket forts to record sound in. So, you know, <laughs> and we don't have studios at home. So there we are. So a piece of equipment I didn't mention, I use a laundry era. You can use anything. Just think about building blanket forts as a kid and use those, those tools. Just find something you can hang stuff off. So I use that and then um, we've got a big king size bed in here. So I've got the king size duvet. So it's plenty big enough to go over this, but you can use multiple things. Duvets I would say are better than blankets because of the um, kind of insulative properties of it compared to blanket. So if you've got a duvet, or a comforter, as some people call them, um, that, that will work better. But if you're using blankets, maybe use lots of them. Um, you might want to use like sleeping bags, or I don't know if the shiny fabric might not work so well, but anyway, the idea is you want something to insulate against the sound. So I just kind of set it up so that it covers the sides as best as I can. And I don't want this top bit to hang down in my face so I adjust that as well and then again like I said you can use multiple ones or if I put my pegs pegs are always handy when you do book events always have pegs helpful so I simply peg <laughs> my duvet to my clothes to oh well that didn't work um like so to um, get this out of my face and also to create a roof for my studio. You know, be creative. This might look shonky. I mean, it is shonky. Let, let's all agree on that. But it works. So just think about how you can create. So I've got the clothes behind to dampen the sound. I've got the duvet around me to dampen the sound. You could do things like if you've got armchairs where you can take the cushions out, build yourself a little fort out of cushion covers. Um, I mean, just think outside of the box. Seriously, go back to being a kid. You want to create yourself a little insulated box. So, then, next steps. Um, I need something to put my microphone on. So, I should have put this in before I, I built this, but anyway. So I use my um, stool for my dressing table. So I'm gonna pop that in because that's gonna be my stand for my microphone and then what else do I need in there uh, a cushion because from experience you know the little magnetic closers on on wardrobes because I have to sit in the, I have to like have my bum in the wardrobe so I can fit it hurts <laughs> so cushion chuck that in there and then all the rest of my equipment um obviously you can set it up beforehand and then build your fort around it be very careful if you've got expensive things that you don't stand on them while you're building a fort. Right, I'm going to set up and then I will give you a little studio tour. So before I show you my studio, um, I would explain all of this in there but it's hot so I'm not going to. So the first thing is maybe don't do this on a really scorching hot day. I did some bits when it was really hot um, when I was kind of figuring out how to do it for Lily the Limpet and it's really hard um, because obviously all of this fabric and the enclosed space makes it just really unbearably hot. So, and you can't really have windows open. I still have the window open in here, which I'll shut it in a bit, but it's just too hot. So obviously consider that, have some water in there. I haven't got any in there right now because I'm only gonna actually record something for about 10 minutes um, because I've got other stuff to do today and I'm kind of just setting this up to show you. Um, so make sure you're prepared for that. It does get a bit a bit hot and uncomfortable. Um, you'll need to take breaks. It's really actually surprisingly draining recording audio. 
And then think about how you speak. So um, drinking water is a good idea, not coffee, as I have been, because caffeine affects your vocal cords. Drink water, try not to eat things like peanut butter that make your mouth claggy. So think about, you don't want all that spitty mouth sound, it's gross. So water, don't eat peanut butter. <laughs> Um, and practice your speaking so you don't want to be gasping for breath. If, like me, you talk at a million miles an hour, and I'm really sorry, I do get people commenting saying, oh, you talk so fast, I'm sorry, I'm from the south of England, and we just blah, 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 so I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, I do try and slow down. That's how fast I talk. This is my slowed down version. Um, but, yeah, you have to kind of really slow it down, do your narration voice, and it, if you practice it, you can get to a kind of comfortable rhythm where your breathing is quite slow and quite, you know. So talk nice and gently and methodic, me melodically um, and with just comfortable breathing space. You don't have to be, and then this happened, and then this happened. And then, you know, just try and slow everything down because otherwise you actually get out of breath really quickly. Um, so you will find a comfortable speech rate if you practice. So no mouth sounds, breathe quietly, talk slowly, and try not to melt. Right, is there anything else I need to say before I go in there? Uh, yes, let's talk about this. Um, so have your book on a or ow, <laughs> digital device because uh, you don't want to be rustling paper because people will hear that. So, unless I have done it, so with Lily, actually, I did use paper. Um, I printed out the words and I pegged them to the to this to the fabric. If it's a short thing, yeah, maybe you can use paper as long as you won't be moving it. Um, if it's a longer book, something like a Kindle or a uh, um, tablet or phone or something you can read it off where you're not turning pages I am conscious of the fact you may be able to hear me clicking so that is something I'll be listening to when I practice with this if you want your book on Kindle uh, I'll link it below um, like your own book on Kindle you can email it to yourself at your center Kindle address and if you've got a PDF version because they don't accept EPUBs or Mobis um, you just put co uh, convert in the subject and they will convert it into a form you can read on here. So that's what I've done so that I can have this and it will be a lot quieter for me changing between pages. Um, a tablet's probably even better because you won't hear those taps. So um, I'm going to show you my little setup in here and then I will talk to you a little bit about my settings on my laptop um, and then that'll be it for today. Right, so here is my fort that I made. Sometimes I put a second duvet at the top just to link upwards sometimes, but it works okay like this too, whatever. Just whatever you've managed to set up. As you can see, I've got a little opening that I can crawl into. This is the bed here with my bits and pieces on. Um, I'm gonna need my Kindle in there. So here is, ow, I've really hurt my legs. Sorry, I find it really hard to kneel down, which is another reason why I'm not recording lots today. Okay, here's my setup. So. You can see I've got my cushion I'm going to be sitting on in there. Um, you've got microphone and pop shield. I've actually found that this stool is ever so slightly too short, so I've got a couple of hardbacks. Again, I mean, this is a real professional setup. Um, in, a, in a blanket for, and actually I'm going to move that duvet over a little bit there, with my microphone on top of a pile of books. But there we are, um, it, it works. And make sure that if you are piling it on stuff, that it's not going to rock and you're not going to hear that sound. So that is set up there. And then you've got my laptop down here. So the microphone is plugged in. Garage band opened up. The nice thing here is I've actually got some plug sockets here so I can um, feed through if I need to charge anything up. And then what did I do with my Kindle? There it is. So that's going to go in there as well so that I can sit in there and read. There we go. That's, that's the uh, recording setup I've gone for. So here I am in my little fort. Hopefully you can hear the sounds quite dead in here. I don't know, it might, might not show very well on, um, on this microphone. Um, so you can get yourself kind of adjusted once you're in. I tend to sort of close the, the door where I came in. 
um, get yourself organized and you can see I'm sort of sat in here now it does my back in you may find that if you've made yourself a little fort like this that you really can't sit in here for long just do short stints do whatever you can um, that's absolutely fine you know just um it's all homemade it's all whatever you can manage so um i will just sit in here and record whatever it is um for however long um and sometimes i edit in here a little bit too because then i'm just sat here and i can just re-record it depends if i get uncomfortable but if i leave this set up and it takes like two minutes to chuck it up and and down um when i need to so if, if I keep this set up, then if I do need to get out and stretch my legs and maybe sit and edit on the bed or, you know, go somewhere else, then I can just pop back in here if I need to and everything's set up. But obviously, because it's super tiny, I can't really show you very well. Um, but, you know, it's all right. And the sound is pretty quiet. So the thing again to do is have a listen. And I mean, it's not perfect, but it's it's better. It's all about getting it as, as good as you can. Um you know. So another thing to consider is sometimes it can be a little bit dark in here, especially once I've pulled the door closed, you see. Um, so if you're reading from a Kindle and you don't have one that lights up, which I don't, you might want a little torch or something. Um, wow, that sound with, with me closing that has got even more. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that, but it's really nice and quiet in here now. Um, then you want to get yourself I've knocked that, I can't do it one-handed. Um, my, I've just knocked my pop shield slightly off. Um, you wanna be sitting about six to eight inches away from the microphone. Have a little practice with your plosives. I personally um, have a, quite a pronounced p sound. Um, you might find that you need to be slightly off center to your microphone, even with the pop shield, it might, it might not do the job. Um, so have a little play with all those sounds. I find the word 12 really hard. I've got quite a, a lot of air comes out of my mouth as I say 12 for some reason. Um, but anything like that, you, you may find, as I say, just angle yourself off with your microphone will, will make a difference. Um, right, so the next thing I'm going to do is show you my settings on my laptop. So this is um, me sat in my audio booth. Hopefully you can hear that this quality of sound compared to my camera is distinctly different. Um, I've gone and closed that window. Actually, what I didn't say is you might want to not record if it's raining or it's stormy. Um, just just consider that um, because you'll be able to hear that. So on a you know reasonably... You know, nobody's mowing, there's no planes going overhead, any of that stuff. Anyway, so here I am in my booth and I'm going to show you on my laptop what my settings are. So this up here is a bit that I've already recorded. Um, and then what you can do is just add another track for the next piece of recording. So look, if I delete that, you just add another one. I want to make sure I see that I'm using my blue snowball. Sorry, I'm not facing the microphone. I'm sorry if that makes a difference. Um, and uh, I'm not bothered about hearing my instrument as I play and record. But when I listen to it, I want to hear my sound from my built in output. You choose what you want and then create. So this is my next um, my next for my next chapter. So this one up here is the introduction. Um, and then this one here is going to be the next the next section of the book. Um, you want to make sure that this is set to time because then you can look at how many seconds the recording is along along the top there, rather than it being like beats per minute or anything, which is completely useless. Make sure if the metronome or any of that is on that you turn it off. <clears throat> so I have muted the piece that I've already recorded before I start recording this bit. Now I wanna have some settings. I'll show you the, the ones that I've got and what works for me, play around with it, but make sure you have a look at the submission requirements for whoever you're using because you're gonna to have to fit in with, with their requirements. Um, so I put on the EQ, I put on a compressor and I put on the limiter. I set the limiter between plus two and minus three because that's what it says to do. Um, you can fiddle around with this stuff. You can, you know, do all of this, but I, I actually don't. I like the sound quite, um, I suppose you could say dry. I might add a little bit of reverb, but I, I probably won't. Um, so these are your master settings. You can change those. Um, and then I also 
use a noise gate and a good place to set it is about 60 but I found that if there's a lot of background noise which sometimes there is then I drop it to around 30 ish you can play with this after you've recorded something so record it have a listen and see what's a good setting for you and your your setup because this noise gate will help to take that hiss away I found um, but if you take that too far it affects your audio and it makes it uh, crackly and it just it's robotic basically so there's a nice line where it will take away that those background noises and make that a very clean background sound and where it affects actually how your voice sounds so have a little play with that but a good place to start is around the 60 mark um i believe that the requirement of acx and all of those guys is 60 65 ish double check that um but yeah you can have a little play with that um as i say personally i sometimes put it lower um and then when you're ready you hit record and then you'll see that it will show your um what would you call that waveforms as you're talking so you can see where it's loud and where it's quieter um and think about whether what you're saying is going into the yellow region yellow region is fine you wouldn't want it to go into red because that's going to be unpleasant for the person listening so make sure that that's kind of at a good level you can play with these volumes you can obviously um, have a look at your your microphone and make sure it is suitable when you've finished your recording you can stop that by hitting the space bar return to the beginning like so and you can have a listen back um, and then as i say on the next video i'll show you how to edit that but you can simply re-record over the top of it if you want to um, and as a, that's part of how to edit so um equally if you uh, get to a point where you've made a mistake you can just keep recording if you want and then you'd be able to cut that section out or you can stop it figure out what you're doing and start again okay and then it, it just depends how you want to do things if you want to stop and start some people put markers of where their mistakes are so they might suddenly clap and then you can see visibly I, those are the places I need to go back and edit personally I listen to the whole thing I'm not just going to look at those edit points because I'm not good enough for that I need to check the whole thing to make sure it sounds okay because it might not so um that is how to record and the settings that I use but as I say it's all variable it's just how it works for me um and you can change all of that um in the next video I'll talk about how to edit and how to upload as i say i might split that into two videos but there we go that shows you what my kind of software setup is there and that's it that's how i record it uh sitting there <laughs> and uh record away do it when people aren't at home do it when there's no noises outside as i say have a practice try it loads of times get it working um before you go for the final take give yourself give yourself lots of time to time to practice um because it, it's just not that easy um so yeah give yourself some grace but you can definitely do it with a diy setup um because i have and it worked so that is all for today i hope you found that useful just think outside of the box do your research see what other people do and you can make it work from home you really can it doesn't have to be expensive you can spend money on it and you can go to a studio or you can hire a narrator or any of that stuff if you want to but if you don't want to and you want to set up something at home it is achievable um whether you do it like this or whether you i mean you can make yourself a little booth if you want with proper acoustic stuff and walls i don't know um but yeah i hope as i say i hope you found that useful please like this video if you enjoyed it and leave me comments below please share anything useful how you've done it um useful videos any of that stuff useful links to like blogs because audio is hard um so yeah anything that you can share with people who are watching this video please do put it in the comments below and if you haven't already please do subscribe for indie publishing type videos and bookish stuff because you know 
books are great. <laughs> so anyway, I uh, hope you found that useful. Take care.